I'm just gonna say it. This kit sucks. My first complaint so far is this piece right here. Why, oh why, they chose to put that sprue standoff down inside the critical body line. Now luckily there is some ghosting, so I kind of know what the shape is supposed to be like. But I kind of feel like this whole ordeal could have been completely avoided. I do understand I could just hold this up to the body and match that contour, but why? Why should I have to do that? Why am I so angry about this? Over the past week here in Kansas, it got real cold, and all the little critters are coming inside the basement where it's warm. This is Chauncey. Chauncey is special. He only has six legs. He's also an acrobat. He does a backflip here in a minute. Watch this. Yeah, right there. Such a good spider. So good. He is rather dumb, though. The hairs on their bodies are super sensitive to vibrations. That's how they can detect predators and prey. He's just sitting here. So I had to give him a very gentle little push because he cannot be here. Back to the build though, I decided I did not like any of that molded in wiring on the inner fenders, so I very gently sanded all of that off. Now for the next obstacle, let's put this hood together. Oh, it was fun. This was a complete fail in engineering, and whoever at Ravel thought this was a good idea Needs to be drug out back and punched in the dick about 30 times. And I do understand the concept and what they were going for here. It's rather clever, it is. It just didn't work. Let it be noted that I do not recommend this kit for any first time builders. I might not even recommend it for people who want to have fun building a model. Because this will fight them and it required a lot of work. We'll, uh, we'll get to some more complaints about this hood later. You guys sit tight. Because next we get a complaint about the hood fitment to the body. And it's not the hood's fault. There is a massive low spot right here. And I know it's not the hood's fault. At least I don't think it is, because it matches these body lines rather decently. And on the other side over here, it doesn't match the body line at all. So what I need to do is sand on that bottom row of the hood to pull that body line down. To fill in the gap, so I just cut a little tiny sliver of styrene and glued it in. That essentially acted as some filler, because from there... I just built up a few layers of super glue and sanded it all flush. On this side, when I start sanding that bottom rail, it made this gap open up. It got the styrene treatment as well, but when it's all said and done, this is what we're looking at here. I maintained that sharp 90 degree angle and there is barely any daylight shining through there. There is just the edgiest teensy bit of a gap right above the fender well. I could maybe slide a piece of paper in there. That's close enough for me. I'm not going to worry about that. The other side, on the other hand, it took about twice as much work. As you can see here, once I get this hood pushed all the way down where it's supposed to go, we got that body line matched up on both sides. And push that hood back down. There we go. The gap's a little bit bigger over here, but I'm I'm done messing with it. Now on the back of the cab, remember, this is that piece I was complaining about earlier. See how well it fits? A 
but this time around now just pure super glue to fill all them gaps in and then i just sanded it all flush and the body was kind of flimsy at this point so off camera i just glued in the firewall it actually fit and required no work so you guys didn't miss anything there but now they got everything back here sanded flush i'm just going to give all the gaps a fingernail treatment if it doesn't catch my fingernail, then it's filled. I wish I could say we were done, but nope, let's move on to the core support here. The passenger side, it fit extremely well. The driver's side, not so much. Now luckily, that bottom rail 99% of it will be covered by the front bumper, so I didn't waste a lot of time trying to fill that huge gap there. In fact, all I really did was just touch up the areas that are visible. Everything fit dimensionally, there were just some panel gaps. Now this shiny spot here, that is unsanded super glue because that is a low spot. I eventually just called this good and moved on because I don't have time to make everything perfect. What I did want to spend some time on though was making sure the end caps on these bed rails were nice and straight. The tail light buckets got the exact same flattening treatment because I want these to sit flush. Now in a real truck, these tail light buckets, these are actually a separate piece on the bed. Now, me personally, I never really liked that look. So for my build, I went back with the super glue, filled all those gaps, and sanded it flush. That, of course, was after several minutes of trying to get these things to fit. You get it right where you want it to be, and then the bed rail just springs back. Now, you guys know me. For things like mirrors, I always like to pin those in place. Now off camera, I did the exact same thing for the actual door handles. They are going to be pinned in place as well. I wanted this tag bracket to be the same as a body color. So I quickly mocked up the chassis and the rear bumper just to kind of help me align this thing by eye. That looks pretty close to center to me. After all the body work, I just wanted to do a little sanity check. So I just done one light coat of primer on here. This stuff does an amazing job. Of bringing all the flaws and defects to the surface. It's pretty smooth all around for the most part. I got one tiny pinhole right there. Not going to worry about that. I got just a bit of ghosting under where I added all that filler. That's absolutely fine. All that's going to be hidden under paint. You won't even see it. For some reason, the CA glue I use when I add kicker to it, it turns this dark gray color. And that's what we're seeing on the top of the bed rail right there. And that's really only shining through here just because I did such a light coat of primer. Once we add paint though, all that's going to be hidden, we won't even see it. Now 
these two notches right here they are for the factory tailgate latch and chain if you build this per the instructions the tailgate will not open being a work truck well i want this tailgate to open i got a few unbuilt trucks in the kit stash i gave a quick look at how their hinges work this seems simple enough The idea is to drill a hole in this so I can mount some solid rod, if I could find it. There it is right there. And that is just going to slide in there, and then I'm going to cut it short and just essentially have myself a little mounting peg. Then I just repeat for the other side and then drill a corresponding hole in the body. In theory, this is a perfect idea. In practice, I couldn't stretch out the body wide enough to get it all to fit. This may have worked if I had done this all before I mounted the tail light buckets. My band-aid of a solution is I cut a little bitty bevel on the back of the tailgate and mounted the little peg thing on the body. This allowed me to kind of wedge it in place and then at the end force the rest of that peg inside that mounting hole with the blade of my X-Acto here. It works. Now let's hope that a few layers of paint doesn't get everything out of spec. I got just a little bit of adjusting to do because the tailgate sits a little bit high, but that's an easy fix. I can just drill the holes a little bit bigger. With the majority of the body work done, I could finally move on to the final primer and paint. Painting is always going to start the same. You start in all the nooks and crannies and the easy to forget areas and then just work your way out. For the paint, I chose Tamiya X14 Sky Blue. Mainly because I had it on hand. For those of you that have been here a while, you might recognize this paint. It's the same one that I had used on the BMW M1 build when I had to paint the M stripe on it with them decals. just didn't work out. Eventually, I had built up three layers of paint, doing my best to avoid the roof line, because I kind of like that two-tone look of the box art. I gave that blue paint a good hour or two to dry, then done some masking, then all the blue overspray, I just went over that area with some white primer to drown it out. And it's probably impossible to see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going over that entire roof line with some Tamiya X2 Pure White. And just to prove I'm actually doing something and there's white paint in here, well, there you go. Now, while the paint is still kind of wet, I'm going to remove all this masking tape. I may be wrong, but in my mind, I think this cuts through the paint instead of breaking off the dry paint so you get a cleaner line. And it also gives it time to level out 
So there's just not a buildup of paint right there at the paint line. Originally what I wanted to do was order some specialized decals with my logo on it, but I don't have time for that. So my personal hero, John Moses Browning, he worked as a farmer for just a very tiny tad bit. So I'm going to use these John's Dairy decals here. This is a huge decal, so make sure you guys get a whole lot of setting solution laid out. I nailed that dead center first try. These decals, they actually laid out fairly well. Once we get all the water squeegeed out, they look like they're painted on. As you probably saw in the thumbnail, this is not a perfect paint job. This next step here, it's all just experimentation and guesswork. I really have no idea what I'm doing. From what I saw on the one YouTube video I watched though, it seems fairly explanatory. Dab an extremely poor sponge in some paint, dab it off on a paper towel, then come back and just added here. It's like a dry brush but with a sponge. To me it seems extremely inconsistent and not that easy to control. I'm sure there's a technique to it I just haven't figured it out. As some of you may know rust comes in different flavors. Dark brown rust is the older rust, and light orange rust is the newer rust. So just build up a bunch of layers, and eventually you'll get something that looks like this. Now being that I'm using a flat sponge, it didn't get down in all the nooks and crannies like this drip roll here. In my mind, that's where all the water runs off and pulls up, so that's where the majority of the rust is going to be. So I just done that part with the brush. Now speaking of that drip willow and water, you got to kind of have physics in mind when you go to lay this out. This taller area in the back, water would have ran off that so there would have been less rust and would all pulled up down on the flatter low area. The method though for the hand paint, the brush, is the same as a sponge. Just dab it in very inconsistently. Now from there though, I'm just going to top this off with just an extreme little bit of yellow. I was thinking that yellow would have sun faded to white and it would have shown through, but you can't even tell I done this. Now finally, I'm just going to use a clean sponge to do what sponges do. 
I'm going to try to absorb some of that moisture out of the paint so I can move on to the next step a little bit quicker. All in all though, for my very first try, I'm extremely happy with this. It's even got that texture that rust does. I was not expecting that. It's one of those happy little accidents. Now off camera, I did the exact same method to the body. I just didn't go as heavy. What I did though for this, I just went and looked at photos of abandoned cars and tried to simulate kind of that pattern and the locations. Try to avoid looking at patina because that is intentional and man-made. I wanted this to look more natural. But hey, I got to try something. I learned a new technique. So if I ever do this again in the future, I'll kind of have an idea what I'm doing. It is currently 1.54 a.m. October 22nd. Got nine days left to wrap this up.